How do you print a full-sized helmet? That is probably one of the most asked questions in 3D printing, and I'm gonna answer it for you. What's going on, everybody? I'm Just G, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be building Goliath's helmet from the hit Marvel show, What If? Also, I'm gonna be breaking down the entire process from start to finish, answering the most frequently asked questions like, how do you size your helmets? What's that red stuff you always use? How do you install the LEDs? And what type of paint do you use? And what's that clear coat? There's gonna be chapters down below to help you navigate through this entire process. I hope you guys enjoy this video, so let's jump right into it. So when printing out a helmet, the first thing you wanna do is find a file that you wanna print out. If we're printing out helmets, I'm gonna find a helmet that I wanna print out. That brings us to this video's sponsor, DO3D. DO3D makes some of the best STL files out there. Their models are very detailed. You can get models from Marvel like Iron Man, Star Wars like The Mandalorian, and many more. When I look for an STL file, I usually go to DO3D first because I know I'm probably gonna find it there. So if you want to use DO3D for your next project, you can use code JG3D20 during checkout to save 20% off your order. So the file I chose for my project was the Bill Foster Giant Man from Marvel's What If series. So now that I want to go check out, I'm going to use code JG3D20 for checkout so I can save 20%. Okay, so when it comes to scaling and sizing your helmet, there are multiple ways to size your head so you can get an accurate scan. So when you want to size your helmet, you know exactly how big your head is. A couple of ways to do that is to use sizing calipers. I got these from Uncle Jesse. I'll put a link and you can take these and essentially measure your head from left to right. So you just want how long it is from this side of your head all the way to this side of the head. Not the circumference, but just how far is it from this side to this side. You can take that and you can scale by, I'll show you. So with knowing how far your head is from the one side to the other side, you can go in and set a measuring tool. So essentially you go into analysis and you click on measure. So I'm gonna click on the second one, which shows the distance between one point to the next. When I do that, I can click on the inside of the point and it's gonna measure from one angle to the next and it's going to give me the, the degree or the measurement and i want to say centimeters and you can take that and measure your head essentially using this that's one way to do it the second way to do it is to actually make a 3d model of your head and i've done this before and i made a video on 3d measuring before and it's actually quite easy you get the app you scan your head and then you export the file it's that easy. Once you get that file, you can download it and export it into Mesh Mixer. Now that we have our helmet moved over to our slicer, I'm using Ultimaker Cura. There are different slicer programs that you can use. This one I chose because it works best for my printer. First thing I wanna worry about is how I'm gonna orientate it on the build plate. Normally when I do this, what? Actually, let's pause, hold on, slow down. We're gonna size it up to the right size that I want. Remember in Mesh Mixer, I said 108%. So that's what we're going to do. And that's the size that worked for my, my big old dome. Then I like to orientate it towards its backside. That way I can use as, as least amount of printing material as possible. This is how I would normally print it. But if we look at our crown, this is where it's gonna stop printing. There's nothing here. I don't wanna print like that. Also, the layer lines are gonna be moving horizontal. So they're gonna be showing like this. I don't like that either. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it back down and I'm gonna print it on this part. So I'm gonna put this part flat. What's cool about Ultimate Cure is that you can click on this button that says lay flat and it's going to show the best way for your print to lay on the flattest surface, which is gonna be right here underneath. Okay, so now that my print is laying flat, I'm gonna to have to generate supports for all of this stuff right here. So now we should be able to slice it up. Now we're looking at two days, seven hours, and three minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this to print. Now that we're done printing, it comes to sanding. Now there are a few easy methods to use when it comes to sanding. The first method is to hand sand. Now I have a few 
sanding paper. I still hand sand. It's always important because with 3D prints, if you hand sand, you can make sure you get into those little nooks, those little crannies, and make sure you sand it down as much as you actually want to sand it down to. I have varying sandpapers from different grits, from 60 grit sandpaper all the way up to 1,000 to 2,000 grit sandpaper. Now the 2,000 grit sandpaper is usually for wet sanding or fine detailing. 80 and 60 grit sandpaper is to knock those initial layer lines down. You want to do this because it saves you time when it comes down to sanding your prints. Sanding block. Sanding blocks are a lot easier and less stressful on your hands. So if you have like carpal tunnel or something like that, then you want to get some sanding blocks. It actually conforms to your print. So when you sand in it, it's actually going to like concave as you push down on it because there's foam in the middle. Sanding blocks are always a must. And finally, we have the orbital sander. When you first start off sanding your prints, I always use my orbital sander because it's a lot faster to knock those initial layers down. That's what I did with this print and I started off with 80 grit sandpaper. They're little pads that you can just take on and off and replace. Yeah. So you take these off and you substitute them for another one and then you put change it from the 80 grit sandpaper all the way over to your 120. So after I knocked the initial layers down with 80 grit sandpaper, I went ahead and switched over to 120 grit sandpaper and it got the print super smooth. Some of the positives of using an orbital sander when you initiate it is it's electric. So it's gonna be a lot more powerful than your hands. But that being said, because it's so, more, so much more powerful, you're gonna have to worry about putting too much heat on your print and actually melting it. So be very cautious when you're using your orbital sander, that way you don't melt your print. I'm using Polymaker's Cos PLA for this helmet. And this is my first actual large print that I've done with this filament. And let me tell you, when it took 30 minutes before I notice a serious difference when sanding this filament down. It's crazy. Yes, Cos PLA, you're gonna sand it down. You're gonna take less time because it's a lot easier to sand. It's ridiculous. For some of this, I don't even have to do my next stage. Before sanding, you wanna make sure you got your PPE. I wear a mouth and nose covering respirator. Also, I wear goggles and I got me a nice box of gloves. I'm in my studio slash garage where it's really well ventilated and I have a ventilation system that kicks all dust, air, and debris out of the garage right into outside. So proper PPE is important when it comes to sanding your prints. After I finish the orbital sand, I'm gonna go into detailing the actual print. There are certain spots that the orbital sander doesn't get to because of how bulky it is. That's what I'm gonna go back to my foam sander and change the grit to 180 or 120. And I can use it just to go into the little details and the corners that the orbital sander missed. Like the back of this print right here. You can see right here that it's very hard for the orbital sander to get to. So I'm gonna take my little sponge and I'm just going to sand it down. And because this is that cost PLA, it's not gonna take as long as it would if I was using PLA Plus. Other things that you can use to help you detail your prints is maybe a file. I got these from Harbor Freight, very inexpensive. They come in round or you can get them in flat. Also, this was on Amazon. This is a deburr, which is used for after like CNC or actually you can use it for your 3D prints. You can turn your print over and actually shave pieces of the bottom of the print off and it actually helps keep things clean and tidy. After I'm done detailing my print, I'm gonna move over to my next stage, which is actually filling in these layer lines using either a Bondo, a resin, or a wood filler. Okay, so now I wanna talk about more post-processing. Things that we need to do with the helmet that comes after sanding. Yes, there's more stuff to do after sanding. Even after sanding, we're still gonna have layer lines that we don't want to show up when we paint. Also, if you have any other imperfections that you have after sanding, like for example, 
right here, oh, right here on the brow, I have some some holes that was in the filament from uh, poor retraction that I want to cover up. Now, there are multiple ways that you can cover up those imperfections, and one of the methods would be resin and a little bit of baby powder. And you add the resin, you apply the resin on top of your print, and you cure it instantly with this UV light. This is gonna create a smooth surface, so when you sand it down again, you could prime it with a smooth surface. Now you could continue sanding by using lower and lower sandpaper until there's no more layer lines, and then fill in the imperfection using Bondo Spot Putty, or you can use wood filler. Both work really well. Once you fill in the gaps, let it dry and then sand it smooth and repeat the process until the helmet is completely smooth. But the process I'm gonna be doing today is using the Bondo Spot Putty along with some acetone. Now the acetone is gonna break down the Bondo into a thinner, more manageable putty so I can evenly coat it all over the helmet. Using acetone allows the Bondo to dry even faster because acetone's a type of alcohol, alcohol dries faster. You get the idea. So for this process, we're gonna get our cup and we're gonna get our acetone. We don't wanna fill it up too much. So I added about three ounces of acetone in here and now I'm gonna fill it up with some Bondo Spot Putty. We're gonna mix this up until we get the consistency of a thin mud. So it's thick enough where it's gonna coat, but it's thin enough where it's loose and still runny. Now that I have a mixture done, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it on there. Then when it dries, I'm gonna sand it with 220 grit sandpaper. Now make sure you wear your gloves and your PPE when you're sanding because guess what? It's gonna get really dusty, really dusty, so. For the extra detail pieces, I used my resin printer and I resin printed off the respirator, the breathe tubes, as well as the ears, but I already primed those. Those are drying in my paint booth. So what I'm gonna do to these pieces, I'm gonna base coat them black and then I'm gonna chrome them. So I'm coming down to the final stretch now. All I have to do is finish up the little detail work, the magnets, the lights, do a nice, coat of paint and then put it all together and we're done so hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video after I applied a generous amount of primer I went straight to 400 grit sandpaper. Normally I do 220 and then 400 on my second pass, but because I did such a great job post-processing, and that's the beginning sanding, that it was smooth enough where I just did a nice 400 grit sandpaper coat. I wanted this to have a more metallic pearl coat to it, so I went with Tamiya Pearl White. But what I didn't know is that that's a top coat. 
So you're gonna have to put a base coat of white first. I spray painted the pearl and noticed that it wasn't getting dark enough. So I went back and sprayed a base coat of white. Then I added the pearl to it. Once I got the whole entire helmet, it came down to applying the chrome. I went through the entire process live and I'll link that video right up here. But I also had to do some pre-tests prior to even painting this helmet. Normally when you apply chrome paint like I did on the mouthpiece and right here, normally you use a black base coat and then you apply the chrome paint. Now the chrome paints that I use are gonna be listed down in the description, but it's basically a stand chrome by ammo. And the blue that I used was a stand blue lacquer. I think it's a cobalt blue lacquer. But I didn't like the way that the blue came off of the black chrome. So I decided to do a white base chrome and then apply the, the ammo chrome paint and then the blue lacquer. That actually gave me a bluish color, which I really like. After I applied the pearl white, I added a clear coat used by my spray gun. The paint's made by Acme Quality Paints. It's a Sherman Williams branded paint and it works perfectly. I did two coats and the, the gloss on this thing is incredible. This looks so great, especially with the lights. I think the lights just add that pop to it that normal helmets don't really get if I were just to paint it. On the front side, I have five green LEDs in the front, including the one right here. And then I have the blue visor. On the back, I have one green LED light and then two yellow ones here at the bottom. And I'm telling you, it came out so great. To assemble the visor, I printed out a template on the printer and then I traced it over some PETG, just flat, sh plastic, clear, like, basically it looks like plexiglass. Once I was able to get the rough shape, I just went ahead and super glued it in there. That's it. The blue color that you're seeing from it is actually from the LEDs that are inside. With the magnets installed on the front face mask, I'm able to take out the visor and then apply it just like this. Makes it super easy to get on and off. I'm really happy about how this helmet turned out. I worked really hard for it and I hope you guys enjoyed this build. So what other builds do you think I should build next? Go ahead and leave that down in the comment. I just wanna thank you guys so much for tuning into my videos and helping my channel grow. We're gonna get bigger and bigger and thank you DO3D for sponsoring this build. If you guys wanna see me actually paint this thing when I was live, you can see that video right here. Everybody have a great rest of your day. God bless, peace out.